Hi, it's Ben from Second Dynasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. We have stuff going on in the background, uh, but the stream has started. Um, there was a visit. Hey. From Hannes. Yeah. Taking all your focus. Now you should focus on the beautiful viewers. Yeah. You make sure you make sure you check out the Train Nerds channel on YouTube. Hannes has started up recently. He uh, does all the filming for my stuff. Uh, and it's just an awesome dude. Any case, uh, I'm Ben from Second Dynasty. I've already said that in the background. We have Alban still not with a microphone of his own because we're lazy. Uh, that was his attempt at a greeting. Uh, and yeah, we make 3D printable spaceships, the most recent of which was the the uh, the Firefly, which you can see here. Why don't I turn to the the close-up camera? Here we go. So this is the third print that I've done of it. Much better. Everything's working as expected in this version. There we go. Um, I have done an earlier prototype as well with a, a clear cockpit lid. It doesn't look that clear from this perspective. It is somewhat clear. Um, I could probably do a better job, but I forgot what John said to say to do about the print settings. Uh, so this is the most recent version for those that are on our tribes, which is basically like a Patreon, if you don't know, or my mini factory. I think if you follow the links in this stream description, you should be able to find your way there. Uh, but basically, we're putting out a new Starfighter every month for the next couple of months, and then we're going to uh, do a larger release of vehicles. And uh, this is all based on our Starfighter uh, modular system, we call it. Um, so basically, the idea was that you could have a bunch of different chassis. Uh, let me switch to Maya here uh, so you can see. So these are all the ones that we've done so far, including this latest version. Uh, and I realized that I kind of want to get my chat up because uh, you guys are important to me. If indeed anyone is actually watching at the moment, because uh, th there's no guarantees. Uh, let's see, there we go. Uh, let's go, I want to go back to my content live. We've got a live stream going and then we want our control room. All right, it's loading. There's the chat. Oh, awesome. <laughs> see, there you can see, Hannes is already interrupted. Mm -hmm. Let me just, uh, I will, uh, can you make someone a... No, he's already a moderator, so Hannes, if you want to post a link to train nodes, you can, I believe. In any case, um, yeah, fitness stuff, but also nerdy stuff. So, I don't know. Check him out. He also works with another wonderful YouTuber, but you can uh, find that out for yourself, because I, I don't know how often I'm meant to mention that. Um, most recent addition here, whoops, is I just colored the landing shuttle like the i think this color is a little bit off uh with the blue maybe we need to change it a little bit and we also need to turn dropbox notifications off for a while so they stop interrupting us and yeah we don't have any email open so we're good to go all right so yeah i tried to make this look a little bit more like the shuttle that uh we have been having a sort of one of the introduction models on the tribes uh it's been put out for free a couple of times as well um but some of you any of you that are actually in the discord may have seen that i have been reworking several parts of this shuttle um most notably i don't i don't think the version out that we have usually has these uh extra mounts so um in this case you could potentially mount uh, some guns down there. There's some open lock clips. Um, I added some lights because, or well, they're not functional lights, but I mean they're. they're um, it felt like there needed to be some kind of uh, lighting for the ship to see in in certain circumstances, right? Uh, there's no navigation lights yet. Maybe that's something I'd add back in in the future. I don't know. I kind of feel like taking this time now between, um, you know, uh, leading up into Christmas and then into the new year to sort of like just do a few smaller things to, to get get me um, 
interested in again in like what the next thing's going to be and one of those things has been developing some new style fighters and actually sitting down again and designing my own designs from scratch um, we've been doing traveler for a while i love traveler uh it's nothing to do with not wanting to do more traveler but it's like the my own designs are quicker and there seems to be a desire for it if the tribes has anything to indicate so uh, this is just texture shading for the most part oh i thought this thing was animated it is it's just animated in the wrong place let's move that there so now it all moves together very good uh, so yeah of course those come down there um but what is the main change that I've been working. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> I've never seen that before. Some kind of focusing. No, 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 it's not the bus. Um, so the original version of the shuttle actually had a couple of different variants, and this is the warp variant. That was a, a part of the Starfighter 2 pack, whereas like we sort of separated it off into its own package where it became the landing shuttle. And um I, I will keep a teal bottom, but maybe not as teal as the one was. So this is sort of like the warp shuttle variant. Uh, but one of the main issues with the shuttle o overall is the fact that, you know, in the original version, the, it's cut off here. The door frame, you kind of have to wedge in and you have zero access to the cockpit. So I wanted to start on a version where the top actually is a separate part, which I've done. So now uh, you can actually take that lid off and actually reach inside the cockpit to a certain degree. Not much, but enough uh, that it just allows a slight bit more manipulation uh, of the interior. The interior itself are kind of colored, make it look interesting in engine. Um, and this will print support free like the original version as well uh, and then i was kind of starting to work today on uh a, a piece of you know, these glass pieces to actually I've, i never do windows but i was going to make the geometry available if you want to put in the windows themselves and then someone said no give us versions with the windows built in and um, i may just do that uh as an alternative once we've got it in place. So I'll have to keep that in mind. I would love to see stuff that's not Star Trek, Star Wars, BSG, B5 inspired design of Ben original. Well, I mean... That's the, like all the sci-fi models. Yeah, that's most of the good stuff. You won't really see very much Star Trek because the ships are too large. Uh, you might see some macros. Um, <laughs> But I mean, the, there is a number of different influences here. There's probably a couple of other ones aside from Star Wars here. I would say that this thing, the Talon, is quite inspired by Kilrathi ships from Wing Commander. Uh, same as the Heavy Fighter, really. It kind of has a Wing Commander feel. Um, the arrow, uh, the uh, the chopper here. I don't know what what you would call a closed rotor aircraft. Uh, but um, I guess let's call it a chopper. Is like a cyberpunk bubblegum crisis inspired one. Obviously, this thing is somewhere between Star Wars and uh, Babylon 5. Uh, Mass Effect 2. Oh, well, I mean, I love Mass Effect, but it's, it's really not my style at all. Um, and so you can see I've been coloring these things. Another thing I've been doing just in, in my spare time, spare time, um, with this time where I'm not overdoing things i also went back in and just updated some of the geometry for some of the weapons that are quite old at this stage uh theo made them way back in the day and um you know we just have prints that make a lot more um we can do a lot more with them these days so i wanted to make sure that uh you know the quality is of a certain standard and the starfighters were done back in starship 4 i think so around the time of the chimera so the more recent stuff obviously i'm not going to update everything to the firefly sort of level of detail but um the firefly the last one i printed i have made the the print build plates available so if you have this the firefly i'd recommend trying that out because the last one i did it was a perfect fit like snug firm 
um, made a satisfying clicking sound. Everything worked, uh, and the wings hold well. Um, so I'm generally very happy with the way that turned out. Uh, and it's a fun, easy print that takes about 12 and a half hours, I think. We do already have a couple of drones, Dalton. Um, but they tend to be more like, uh, inspired by, uh, we've got some Expanse drones and then we have like a drone fighter that has a swing wing on it. Um, so what was I looking at doing today? Well, that's a good question that I'm not sure I can answer myself. I would have said at first that I'm just going to do some more weapons and tidying up and stuff and really just have a bit of a hangout session. Uh, since coming into the Christmas area and, you know, you know we, we've got the, the stuff that we've got outstanding for Traveler is all sort of map related, <coughs> which uh, is coming in all, along nicely, but, you know, um, that's uh, handoff stuff at the moment, so I'm not personally doing that at the moment. I'm sort of focusing on the materials that we're going to look at in the coming months. <coughs> And part of that is a Starfighter 3 pack. So um, it will have, for example, the Fireflame. We'll make a bunch of variants for it with new armaments and whatnot. Just like I had for the original concept in 2006. Um, you can kind of see here that I've updated some. Here are the updated weapons. You can kind of see how, how much smoother they are. Right? Look at the detail in the barrels. There's actually a gap there. And then we can kind of like contrast that to the originals where you can kind of see how rough these are in comparison. So you don't have to like revise everything. Like this is still not like massively, massively updated. But it's enough that, you know, it, it, it does look a lot better. Um, and, you know, the, these indentations are proper indentations now. Uh, and the best thing of all is, instead of, like, how do the original guns look? Let's have, take this one and isolate it. And this is the flat side that prints, right? Uh, which is great for printing, so you don't need supports. Uh, but, and you kind of have this clip hole here. Uh, but the bottom of it looks horrible, <laughs> right? It looks very flat. Uh, but the new versions have this pattern built in. It looks like it's like radiators or something, you know, so that the actual, it has some texture to it was the point. Uh, so that that's looking better. And I kind of really enjoyed the process of updating that weapon. Uh, and we have a bunch more that we could do. Uh, like these are the original ones that Theo did for me. Uh, I did start working on a new sort of laser cannon too here somewhere. This thing. So, you know, you can... And this uses the same base, but, you know, the bar it's easy to change out the barrel uh, barrels and make some variants, you know. Um, and that's the sort of thing we'll probably do for accessories because we'll run the sort of, like, let's see, drop tank sensors, <laughs> pods and things. Someone is an aircraft fanatic. Um, we do have some sensors that we did as a sensor pod uh, that you could have instead of weapons. Um, it is a bit dark in there. Can we turn the lighting off? It doesn't really help because the, the shiny parts are so dark so that they... Yeah, it's a consequence of the kind of material that we have on them. I didn't realize, so drop tanks or like fuel... Uh, yeah, they're fuel tanks. Ah, I thought it was like uh, drop pods with tanks in them. No, no, no. <laughs> See, m most of these anyway, I would assume are nuclear powered, not that they don't have fuel in the same sense. Mm. But, um, you know, I understand if people want to have that sort of thing. And we sort of built into the Firefly a little bit more options for using the same sort of connection that we use as uh, the feet of the uh, sorry, the, the uh, landing gear, rather. See, that's another thing we could do variants of easily that look better. Um, in any case, 
that was one thing, but I kind of want to talk about the direction we're going in. Uh, especially since this is probably going to occupy like the next three months, I'd say. I love all these ideas. Airwolf was uh, a fond memory for me, although I was very young. Fast pack for Valkyrie fighters. Um, you need to have something that needs a fast pack. <laughs> but I do like the idea of, you know, micro-missile launches or that sort of thing. Um, and that's something I'll certainly consider building in. Uh, there are a couple of models where I think, you know, it would have been cooler to have... Um, like, it's not clear to me how you would land this thing. I think you would land it sitting down. Uh, but in which case, you know, there needs to be, like, some stands built into the back or something. Um, you can't land it on the actual engines. Uh, although it does have engine overkill as well. Um, we haven't colored this one. I think we just called it the Fury or something. Obviously, it's a inspired by the star fury but kind of like if you cross the star fury with um i guess a tie fighter <laughs> or uh one of my other fighters i think these sort of intakes here look very 70s ish rather than 80s or 90s um, but yeah anyway let's talk about the new design so every month we've had a poll and let me uh let me pull up the latest one on our tribe, if I can find it. Let's see. That is the frontier. Oh, we're very close, by the way, to that final stretch goal for the Beowulf campaign. It does close in four days. Uh, so please, uh, if you are thinking of doing an upgraded pledge or anything like that, now is the time. I know a lot of people in the U.S. are getting paid on Monday, so, you know, that will be a... Uh, Hopefully uh, a good final run, but we'll see. So I want to be going to my public profile. This is on the other screen. I'm just going to move it over once everything's in place. And I'm going to unhook that. We'll put it out here. So this is our tribe. We really need to update the graphics, I feel, or put in a video or something. But uh, John and I run it together. Uh, and we have... Um, you know, uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted here by trying to figure out which window to put it on. So we have a number of updates. We have about 350 tribers on at the moment, although some uh, are just uh, in for a free month. So usually we have about around 300 that stay on, which is awesome. It's way more than I thought it was going to be. I didn't think we would be focusing on this anywhere near as much. Um, but coming off the Beowulf, we want to put a little bit of attention into it. And apparently people really like my original designs. So that's the response I'm getting. Let's look at the most recent post that we did, uh, which was January Starfighter poll. Here we go. So I presented two new designs to vote on. And technically, you do not need to be a member of the tribe to vote on this. I will link it in the chat anyway, so you can follow along yourself. But we have the spider bug. I might open up the graphics of this in Photoshop because they're about twice the dimensions or more. So we have two designs. <gasps> but I'm just not used to talking all this much. Also, I feel like I have way more of a lisp on mine than I have in everyday talking for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, Starlancer. There we go. So we have two different designs which I've colored in. Uh, the Starlancer was from the same page as the uh, Garu Bath concept. Um, let me open that. So this, in December, no, what was it? November. We had a competition between the Firefly and the, uh, so the, the Firefly started out looking more like this, right? And ended up being this. Right. So this is taking the concept 
and executing it so it becomes a 3D printable like the 3D printable I'm holding up, right? So you can see now what the end result will be. And that is a process that takes me several weeks, I would say. So we had the Firefly, it was competing against the Garou Bath, although at the time it wasn't anywhere near as, you know, detailed as, well, that's kind of ugly. <coughs> this is a slightly more fleshed out version. Um, but we said we would run these two designs, the Spider Crab, and the Star Lancer, and um, these aren't looking super good because of the zoom levels. Um, so I'm just going to put fit screen on both, but I think it gets a bit pixely for some reason. So in any case, again, we have the Spider Crab and the Star Lancer, and whichever one doesn't win is going to run up against the Garou Bath in uh, the poll for February ship, right? So the Star Lancer is basically a giant gun with the concept being that um, it takes a long time to power up that weapon, which is essentially a um, capital ship beam laser, right? And it's quite vulnerable while it's charging up, it has to move slower, it has uh, some point defense cannons and uh, some micro missile launchers built into the hull uh, to sort of... Uh, give it a little bit of defenses whilst it's going. This thing up the top that looks like a propeller is like a sensor array. And I've actually blanked out the circle there because it used to have a kite shield in it. Um, and uh, I, let's say a, a red shield with a white kite on it, if anyone's familiar with that. This original design in 2006 was designed to be a, a sort of cousin to the Lancer II. SF-3A space fighter from Macross and in fact the idea behind the spider crab 2 was kind of based on that as well let's change our workspace to the default there so we're not there we go let's fit screen okay uh, the spider crab on the other hand is a utility ship and I thought uh, it might be worth trying to explain this a little bit because it's hard to tell from my sketches what the hell this is and what the hell that is um, and what's to scale and what's not to scale. So this is a, a utility vehicle for salvage or scrapping uh, in space. So it too was inspired by a Macross design called the Spider Bug, hence the Spider Crab name, which is in honor of it. Although um, aside from the sort of like pod feeling that both ships have, uh, this is vastly different, I feel, in design. Um, so it doesn't have huge big engines. It's not designed for long hauls or anything like that. It has, you know, a couple of thrusters on the back. Uh, the interesting thing here is that these sections are kind of like rotative, rotatable. So it rotates on a mount, kind of like the engines of uh, a Shuttle Alpha. I don't know exactly how big it is, but I imagine it to be three 1.5 meter squares worth in the middle with maybe like um, probably a seat on one end and then a seat on the other. And I'm thinking variants of it would actually be kind of like a digging machine where, you know, you might have uh, a bucket on the front end and then you might have like... Um, like a, a big claw to like break up metal or something on the opposite end i'm not not entirely sure uh, but when i designed it, i was like okay so i want to have these arms that pop out so it's got four main arms and they would be with magnetic claws that can kind of grip onto huge big sheets of metal and then you would have a bunch of implements down the bottom potentially more than just the two i've drawn we have a gripping claw we have like a, a laser welder or something like that so it could cut or weld or repair different parts of a damaged hull or it could break down ships you know derelicts or that sort of thing for salvage um 
So it's meant to be utilitarian. We've never done a ship that's not a combat ship, and I felt like this could be something cool. You know, sometimes when you've got a scene, you just want to have something in your hangar that makes a it's it's just fills it up that feels a little bit more um, lived in because this will fill the role of you know having a vehicle that's uh, that's ancillary that that's you know. Just like if you were in an aircraft carrier, you would see forklifts or other sort of small vehicles for towing or moving things. Uh, you know, in, in space, you need to be able to repair stuff, maybe sometimes at a scale that's a bit bigger than what, you know, a, a crew can do to get out. So the spider crab thing comes from the long arms that will pop out. So we'll see if we can make these functional or not. Hopefully we can do it in such a way that they're not too loose. Then it has a very Macross-inspired sort of cluster of RCS thrusters on the sides here in these little shield areas. So all those little dots are different thrusters. And the idea is a couple of lights at the front. So it kind of has like a submarine feel to the central cockpit thing, like a mini-sub thing. And then um, when it lands... The feet close up like in this configuration for the most part, uh, but then this would rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, which is what we're showing here, and the claws just act as the feet. So it sort of lands standing up, and then I guess you probably would have something in the belly uh, that is where you would exit the, video the vehicle, uh, depending on the height. So this guy is not to scale. Um, yeah, I, I kind of really like this idea, and apparently, uh, so do the people voting, <laughs> because uh, it is winning by a landslide at the moment. Um, it may have something to do also with the fact that the spider crab is shown first. I don't know. That worked in the last poll as well. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to talk through that a little bit. Um, both of them have a kind of like in-world... I don't know, I feel like I'm starting to create a little bit of lore around things because I feel like design design works best when you have a purpose in mind. And kind of like... Uh, the closest thing I can think of is like Star Citizen where they design ships based on different roles. So this is kind of like taking it further. So a specialized ship, right? And e even the Star Lancer is a specialized ship because it's a heavy fighter of sorts, but it's really designed to tackle com capital ships. Okay. All right. Um, anyway, I just wanted to talk to, about that for a little bit. Let's get back to the scene. And um, I was also considering doing John's uh, fold-out bed of furniture that we're also going to do for Tribes this month. Um, but he reminded me, like... A quarter of an hour before the live stream went on and um oh there's one more thing we need to talk about sorry uh before we do move on uh and that is beowulf uh work actually because finally finally uh we were able to get the instructions done and this is something that uh lisa lot has worked uh tirelessly on uh, after John also worked very hard through uh, illness. Uh, it is a couple of weeks late, but hey, better late than never. The thing is, it is a very large document. In fact, it is 101 pages. Uh, there are many, many steps. And uh, so the ship itself, obviously, with 250 parts, it wasn't going to be that simple. And that's 250 parts, by the way, before thinking about clips. So with clips, it's got over 500, I'd say. Um, I don't want to scare people off. It is a great fun build to do. And the whole of deck C, that's the bottom deck, is um, actually up at the moment with build plates. So if you want to just throw them on the build plate, print, and then assemble later, uh, you guys have a quick and easy version of doing that. If you want a Beowulf, it is on the expensive side at around about 75 bucks for the design, but it is incredibly detailed 
let's see. Um, so, yeah, a couple of trips, uh, tips we updated, talking about the clips and where to use them. Uh, also, um, I think we have a section on the rod somewhere, uh, although not specifically where you should buy them. So, um, you know, this information is a little bit more updated than our usual ones. Of course, you have a print list too for each step. So if you just want to follow along manually, you can. And obviously, there's a lot to it. Uh, so many steps, in fact, that we started putting ads in. <laughs> um, we should probably put one in for the light kit as well, I realized. Although version one of the instructions are out at the moment, so you can download that. Um, over 9,000 clips. I don't think so. Um, let's see. So, uh, yeah, we have a couple of ads, and then, yeah, you can see all of the details here. Hopefully, we've thought about most things. But, to be honest, until someone actually prints out the entire ship, we're not going to know how well people can actually follow this. So, uh, yeah, ho hopefully, uh, most of these instructions provide enough guidance that, you know, you guys can successfully build it. I don't think... I think there are some parts that are fiddly, but on the whole, you'll figure it out if you've got the parts there physically. So I just wanted to mention that uh, so that we know that it is there. Now, let's see. Is there anything in the chat of note? You guys were um, commenting a lot about the spider crab. Would the spider craft be able to fit into the cargo variant of the Alpha Shuttle, the external cargo pod one? Maybe? I don't know yet. It all depends. Um, reminds me of the Thunderbirds or Go recent pods. I haven't seen the recent stuff. It should be interesting to check out. Um, might it look better it flipped so the cockpit is on top? No. <laughs> well, you can flip it if you want. Uh, but no, I'm going to design it the way I've designed it now, I think. It, especially if we've got a bunch of people voting for it. Um, so let's see. Uh, great to have s s such stuff, civilian. Uh, I would like to see more like that. I have a feeling there's a lot of people that would like to see more like that, to be honest. Um, and I feel like that's kind of the direction we'll go into. It's like, I was thinking about that with uh, macro stuff, actually. You know... You can easily get models of Valkyries. There's like many, 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 many different variants of them. Uh, occasionally you might get Destroids. But, you know, there's a lot of tanks and vehicles and things like that that you can just never get because, um, you know, they're, they're such secondary vehicles. But they really can make a scene look more interesting, right? How do the pilots get to the fighters? How do they rearm a fighter? How do they repair ships? Well, a spider crab. Um, a non-combat ship is also great for players and an RPG to jump in for a chase. Makes them think outside the box with what to do. Yes, it does. Or you could say like, well, this laser that's on this uh, you know, salvage vehicle is actually very powerful and dangerous, but only at very short range. Uh, some people joked about having swarms of spider crabs. Um, sounds kind of scary. Would be great if this fit into the bigger ships. Well, it will fit into some ships, I'd say. Um, so, we'll see how we actually uh, do it um, when it, it's physically built. And of course, I'm sure there will be several streams of that. Um, come the end of January or early uh, sorry, come the end of December or early January. So remember, again, we're still in the middle of voting. So although it has 83% of the vote, um, there is some gaining uh, voting being done for the Star Lancer. And when it initially launched for the first 50 or 60 votes, it had like 98% of the vote. So that is definitely going down. You know, we don't know exactly what we're doing just yet. I vote for the spider punk. No, I love my designs equally. <laughs> oh, man, my throat hurts today. Um, let's see. Can you make those assembly directions for everyone? What do you mean? 
They're, they're for everyone that owns the Beowulf. I'm not going to put them out for anyone that doesn't own the Beowulf. But uh, they, they have been released already, if you're asking that, uh, Fiery Phoenix 22. Or do you mean for every one of the ships? So we, we do have them for larger... <laughs> vote for Star Piercer. Oh yeah, by the way, the, the, the Star Lancer is being renamed to Star Piercer, we think, because um, it's a bit too close to another... We have already a fighter called the, the, the Lancer, which is this one. So, all right, uh, let's see. What weapon are we going to update today? So, we could work more on our laser. I want to add a couple of, like, tubes and things to it. Like, I, I feel some of these weapons lack, like, piping, ammunition feeds and that sort of thing. No, you want to copy what you want a copy just of the assembly manual without owning the ship see the reason why i don't want to distribute it is because um if someone shares the files but not the manual it will make piracy a little bit easier um, you don't have to have 3d it's a pdf Oh, he did, but maybe they don't own the uh, the ship either. Maybe that's the issue, John. So, yeah, we have our base weapons here. This one's already been done. Uh, I haven't done the Gatling yet. Um, we've got this. I'd say this is a candidate. Uh, and what else? This is a candidate. I think we can do that better. Or we can make an original weapon. What do you guys want to do? So, let's see. Let's get this in position so you can easily see them. Okay. Alright, so let's make a pole. How do I make a pole? Do, 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 do. Engage with your audience. Start a poll. There we go. All right. So let's ask the question. Let's see. Left weapon is weapon A. Right weapon is uh, weapon B. And weapon C is we design one together. So weapon A. Um, oh, God. I can't spell today. I have to sort of work around my microphone. New new weapon. All right, there we go. We can start voting on those. What new weapon two? We could talk about fuel pods or some kind of non-weapon version. This is going to be a new weapon, isn't it? <clears throat> so get voting on that. Yes, that includes you who is just uh, streaming whilst you're working or something. Let's see. Let's keep it open for another minute. So like at 3.40. There is a bit of a lag, but not that much. <laughs> okay, now we're, now we're up to weapon B, which is this one. So we'll see. That's kind of relieving in a way, because I'm not sure how well we can design a whole new weapon in 20 minutes, but we can try. Alright. 
No one's interested in weapon A, which is fine. I kind of see why. Oh, someone is. What's going on here? Got a final surge. Four seconds left. Three, two, one, zero. And then we'll wait 20 to 30 seconds for the lag. Uh, but I, I think, uh, oh, wow. We've got a tie. We need someone else to vote because we've got a tie. Let's see. How many people have actually voted? Nine people. So we need a tenth. We need a, a deciding vote. Someone please vote. John, did you vote on something? I voted on something. You might go to the dark. That's the point, I guess, is what it is. Mm hmm. What did you vote on, Alvin? New weapon. Okay, so I guess then we will say it's weapon B if Alvin voted. Uh, so we'll redo this. I'm going to move it over first. Whoop. What's going on? Uh, to where my other weapons are. Uh, actually, what I might do is... Whoa, we're completely off the grid here. Because I don't think we have anything in this <coughs> lineup. We've never had it on one of our fighters before, in fact. So I might be inclined to actually make this more interesting in general. So let's... i tell you what. The Lancer at the moment has these two auto cannons on it. But imagine if it had a big MF uh, laser instead of... Uh, auto cannons. So I'm just going to set this into place and see how it looks and then we'll see what we would need to do to make this feel like it really fits in on this. And uh, we might eventually even update the files because uh, well that's one thing I'll try and do by the end of the day that will launch those new parts of the shuttle so that kind of looks more interesting to me although also not <laughs> at the same time the underside of this weapon uh, kind of is suffering compared to the uh, the upper end um i feel like it is dropped down a bit lower than it should be like it would be nicer if it was i don't know like only stuck out so much maybe um but in any case let's look and see what we've got to work with and what we need to take into account when we are modifying such things so um i'm just looking at the side here where the clip holes are this is something we've got to really take into account one of the other issues is you can see the triangulation on the mesh um, i'm not sure if this has been a stl file that i've imported in uh, but we kind of need to do some mesh cleanup before we can get too far. So um, we'll see how far we can get in a few minutes. I need to end this poll. Someone else voted. Or well, someone took their vote away. Anyway. I don't know. No, there was 10 votes, so someone else voted for it. Too big for a small ship. Yes, it is. It is. But the whole point of this fighter is the that it's called the Lancer, and it has a large weapon, right? Um so the first thing I'm actually going to do is detach the clip. So I'm just going to, um, uh, let's see, wrong button. Uh, just select the clip hole thing and we're going to separate the mesh. And the reason I want to do this is essentially to uh, ensure that we're not messing with the clip port itself. So. The most obvious thing for me to do here, I think, is to just shift this forward just a little bit. Uh, we'll change the shape of the rear of the gun too, so it's just a little bit more interesting uh, than what it currently is. Uh, and then I think we need to sort of like add some kind of support structure to the, the overside here so it looks heftier, right? To me, this kind of looks like a Star Citizen laser from the top. Uh, the bottom here, 
not so in love with. So we're going to look at changing a few things. But one of the things we can do uh, now is actually drop down. Whoops. Let's just ease down the clip. And uh, we need to look at where this is actually going to go through because we we will create a little bit of an issue. What, what I'm actually going to do, I feel, is match this so it's flat here. And then we're going to add in a bit more geometry. So there might actually be a couple of holes when this prints uh, right in the corners, but it'll be intentional um, and it will break up the geometry a little bit. But what this allows us to do is then go back and pick up these and drop them down to fit the clip, right? And then all of a sudden, if we recombine these, combine, uh, we, we could have changed the clip too so that it had a different connection, but that's usually reserved for smaller weapons. So this is still going to be like the large variant. And normally these would be attached to turrets on ships, not on, on like a starfighter. But as this is the Lancer, uh, and it implies that you know it has a big weapon, kind of similar to that concept, um, we we now can see what we're going to need to modify uh, to make sure that this will fit. And I feel that looks a lot better already, even though I can't see the overall design. It looks like it doesn't stick out as much, right? So. Um, we will have to make a few more modifications so it's not going to conflict with all of this, but it also feels like this needs to drop now, down now anyway, so. All right, uh, I'm gonna make the clip separate again. Uh, separate, whoops. Uh, one of the clear things we need to do from the side view, whoops. is sort of like make sure that this is all going to fit inside. So we will drop these down, probably so that this line is parallel with like the top of the barrel there, or bottom rather. Top, bottom, I guess it's upside down. Anyone asking any questions, Alvin? Mm, not sure. Change the nerdy mouse, perhaps? Uh... uh Mm, no, for a smaller version, yes, but not now. Hmm. In my experience, more detail you do is with PLA, the limitations, because you still would do the older versions of the guns. Yes, I still would do the older versions of the guns. Yeah, the older guns aren't going anywhere. That's one of the beautiful things about these iterations. Hmm. You can see here how care has been taken to make sure that this prints flat, right? So we may have to make something more interesting here. Uh, maybe the way to do that is to sort of like make this thing different than what it currently is. But um, we'll have a look. All right. Um, do, 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 do. I could just need to get like something to like gum, not gum, that will sound horrible in a microphone. Um, but something to make me feel a little bit uh, less dry mouth during a stream. It's because you guys make me so nervous. I'm so nervous. No, that's not true. I'm in my 40s now, so I just stop caring about what other people think. It's one of the best things about Middle age. It's weird. It's like when I was a kid, 40 was definitely middle aged, but now it's like I'm just a big kid. I don't know. Maybe it's a denialist thing. It's a pre midlife crisis thing. My midlife crisis was that I started to design spaceships, and then I never stopped. Uh, right, so I'm just going to go through and get rid of some of these uh, triangles here, turn them into quads. This is all about the shape of the geometry. 
Um, basically, uh, when you import an STL file, it's all triangulated because it's an old file format. It's not quadratic. Um, we're also going to get rid of like a couple of elements that are just unnecessary. So technically, all of these triangles here, unnecessary. Um, if I'm selecting multiples, I would also hold control whilst I did it. Uh, and technically, this line here in the middle is not at all needed. And we can easily add these things back in later. Um, if we're lucky, we can do stuff like select this, go to our quadrangulate tool, and it will do it for us. Maybe we can do next layer. This is a good ideal example of when you can use the tool easily. But you don't want to do it in too many steps. Like if we select all of this, I'm sure one of these might be misinterpreted. Actually, no. Let's try it again. No, we're good so far. Okay. Let's try this. So, if I select all of these, this actually looks good. Press G. Okay. Some of this is working out good, but I bet there will be instances where it doesn't. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. But um, the geometry here, it's not really done the way I would do things today. Um, I didn't make the original model again. That was Theo. Not to diss uh, his work. But uh, what remains of the mesh uh, needs additional work <laughs> uh, now. And there are a couple of things from Boolean operations that haven't quite panned out. Um, that I would do completely differently. Um, you know, splits in places where really there doesn't need to be a split. Uh, so, let's see. For example, I can take out all of these edges. Whoops, not that one. And you can kind of get the impression of how this will be time consuming. Because it is. Um, but yeah, if we get things quadratic, that makes it easier to also increase the fidelity. And in fact, like all of these details, like with the indentations, it's better to take them out and then uh, do a fidelity pass. Like, look at this. This looks like a bullions, if you ask me. It's actually fairly clean, but, you know, it's not the way I would do it today. Uh, same here, where you've got you know a couple of a, a bit of camfering going on, where you can tell that there's been two different parts, one which was boolean and one which was not. So it would actually look better to me if we lifted that uh, entirely. So why don't we try that? Let's uh, get into side view here. Wait until your 50s like some of us all grey beards. Uh, midlife, lol, just wait, you haven't seen nothing yet. <laughs> midlife is when you're invited to the same number of weddings as you are to funerals. I have a feeling it's going to be more funerals. It is weird going through life and seeing what uh, what happens to people like it's usually the ones that go that you're not expecting um right so i wanted to raise this slightly uh so i want to grab all of these what i don't want to grab actually we'll just re make that so i'm just going to grab and th these are really minor details <coughs> sorry that really aren't going to make or break the design, but will lead to slightly more interesting variant. What's going on there? We're going to have to fix that. So I raised this up just a little, and what we want to be doing then is, uh, you know what, we're going to erase all of these. All of them. And we're going to rebuild it. All right, actually, that probably is fine. Delete those. We're going to be deleting these anyway. Uh, 
and then we're gonna grab from here to here. We're gonna use our extrude tool. And we're gonna snap that to over here. And then basically this line here, there, should now line up to there. And it looks good. And then we just are going to start combining these. This line is not necessary. And then we just sort of match them. Um, but there's a couple here that, you know, we don't, like this is not needed. I don't know what's going on there. So there'll be a couple more that we just get rid of entirely. We're both reducing the polygons, which in this instance really doesn't matter that much because... Uh, huh. This one... Oops. Let's see. Is that the right one? We want... We want that one there. So we're going to have to change this a little bit. Just combine that. And we can see from the other side here that there's a bit of a... Let's see. Okay, that was right. Move that there. Move this one there. Okay, that makes more sense. Because we want to keep this line straight here. Right? And it's tiny things that will both print better but also look better. Uh, let's see. I've been to five times as many funerals in my adult life than I have weddings. That, that sounds horrible. But it could also be a consequence of the fact that people of my generation and younger aren't really having kids the way that people used to. I have no children. I don't need any because I am a child. Also don't like the way that this works. I think um, we're going to delete all of these edges. If I was really clever, I'd split this whole thing down the middle too and only work on one side, which is probably the optimal thing to do, to be honest. Uh, but you can kind of see like this end gone that's left wants to bend things in a certain way. If I chose it and went to triangulate, we'd get the same thing that we just made. So the way to control this is just to add a single line here to there. Oops. I have a snapping on, so that didn't work out. Oops. Why is that happening? Because I've got snapping on. You said that. There we go. And you can kind of see already that that's changed. And if we select this and turn that into angles, uh, sorry, into triangles, you get the shape that we're looking for. And um, it will look even better once we grab these lines, we smooth them, and uh, then sharpen the ones we do want to keep. Why didn't that change? Huh? Why did that not change? Maybe we actually want to smooth it between things. I'm not entirely sure. So we've got that sticking out. We also wanted to change this a little bit. Let's uh, let's have a look at how, okay, it was the bottom side. So now it's not an issue. Aside from the fact that it looks boring. Um, so I'll tell you what, what we will do is we are going to, hmm. This doesn't look entirely straight for some reason because that comes down there. All right, so. I'm going to add in a shift here. Uh, and by shift, I don't, that's not a technical term. I just mean like a shift in a shape, like uh, breaking it up. And then I'm going to separate these lines and we're actually going to just uh, push these polygons back to like here. Now this won't work as it presently is. I'm going to combine the vertices to destroy basically 
uh, those extra polygons. Uh, but what we what we need to do is create an angle here. And the safest bet is probably to just uh, just to use line snapping here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select this point, and then I'm gonna select. Oh, uh, why doesn't that work? Meh. <coughs> is it because uh, we're on the wrong side? Not working at all. Uh, my, uh, why? Why do you do this to me? Okay, um, let's increase our grid to like 20, maybe. Yeah, not enough. Display grid, and then we'll put it up to 40. So there's a lot of different squares here. I'm just going to do a grid cut instead to get the rough angle we're looking for. We're just going to cut these off completely and move these back. You can see here that there's like a little line here, but um, at pruner scale, it really it won't show up. It does create an ugly end gone though, but. Huh. So if we look at this again, this should be pretty flat. Technically this should be all one angle. Why is, is that a different shade? Huh? Trying to figure out why this is a different color. Because it's not a different angle. Is it reversed? I don't know. You know what? I'm just going to delete those and we'll rebuild it and see what happens. One there, one there. Oh, look, they're the same color for some reason. Another Maya bug. What a shock. <laughs> Alvin knows what's up. Oh, we're already at four o'clock. Well, let's keep going. We haven't got anywhere near finished here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I need to choose my battles with this one. We do need to change the shape there. We have changed the shape at the top. Um, we are starting to make this look a little bit more interesting. So let's focus on the back here before we call it a day. And again, we want to see the actual open lock clip, so I'm going to grab that to isolate it. Um, and we just want to make sure here that, like here, we're not actually getting in the way of uh, any of the parts of our design. So this needs to print flat like so. Uh, we don't want to take out too much. So my inclination would be to create a sort of channel in here. Uh, so let's... Let's do this a little bit mathematically. So I'm just going to take 10% of each side, like so. Uh, and then we'll do the other side, like so. Uh, and then we'll just drag that over a little bit, I think, so that it matches like here. Alrighty. <clears throat> now we do need to do something here as well. Um, the trick will be to just cut there, cut there, cut halfway through, which should be, actually that doesn't look like it'll be a similar width. Maybe something like that will be the same thickness. I don't know. Maybe halfway between that. They don't need to be incredibly accurate, um, just look vaguely right. And then one trick here is we need to bring this in on that side and that side. A couple of things we can do. The first I would try is actually changing the pivot point to match the halfway point there, and then we just drag that across to there. It looks fairly accurate. I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. 
it is off a tiny bit and really what we could do here is just cheat and use the scale tool and only scale in the X direction which is the red one and there it looks a little bit more like the thickness is the same throughout and then basically I will come up a little bit here as well uh, sorry I didn't think I had snapping on something like that and then we're just gonna take this huge chunk out <laughs> um, and we're going to rebuild this so um, we could also have done this a different way but yeah we're gonna leave it like it is at the moment so what I'm gonna do now is just grab these edges and we're gonna do an extrusion backwards so we're gonna scale it to get that effect and then we're just going to make sure we're not going to intersect with the open or clip hole so we bring it back to like say here and we unselect the top and then we can do a bridge which will recreate the geometry and then what we actually do is drag down this piece uh, maybe we will match it to along here and then match it to the bottom of the clip so that this runs sort of like parallel there we go that should be enough thickness I think for at least one wall if not two and we will then um, just do a few more extrusions I think to get this so like to there, then another one down to there, and then we can just rebuild this geometry with the bridge tool, like so. Uh, can we do that better? It doesn't really matter. Right, right, and then we'll just fill in the triangulator bits here. So what this does is it sort of opens up the back and it looks a little bit less like something that has to print flat on the printer. Now this still isn't going to give you the best contact areas. I wonder why that came out green. Let's just do a fill hole that usually fixes it. No, no it didn't. That made it worse. Let's color it all Lambert 1. Lambert 1 being the default material in Maya. So you can see the clip is intersecting here. Um, we do want something to increase the support here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these. And we're going to go up by 0.3 millimeters. Oh, we don't have the going on. Put the HUD back on. So let's go 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So it's going to stick out a little bit further. Uh, oh, yeah, that's okay. The clip hole's down this end. Oh, I accidentally did it on the opposite end. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Hmm. Actually, it is. Because we need that to be flat. So we're just going to delete this. Um, but yeah, that's going to create like um, a couple of slits in the side. That won't be too much of an issue. Uh, this will be something that Netfab deals with and then uh, this line can actually come back a bit further now um, I feel something like that is fine um, actually no, let's go there and what we'll do is get a bit cheeky and uh, we will oops Sometimes it's better to have the select tool on instead of the uh, move tool. And you won't accidentally uh, move any of the polygons whilst you're selecting them. So I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to extrude it by like 0.1. Which is extremely subtle. This kind of extrusion really you're probably only going to see any result on a, uh, on a resin printer. But well, we've kind of created a few interesting panel lines there. Not super interesting. This, remember, there's going to be a slit here where the um, 
with the open lock clip kind of pops out. Technically, you don't need all that room for those clips at the end. In fact, let's let's look at that. So these do kind of like flare out. Um, so we want to want to make sure the flaring is gone because I know these days the printers just can deal with it as is. So that's that side. That's that side. Makes me wonder if this thing actually is centered. This is only sticking out a tiny, tiny bit now. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the results will be. But yeah, that's done. Um, what else is a weakness of this design? Um, well, for one thing, this is a problem, right? That needs support. Um, so the best thing to do is make this sort of like more like an add ahead type adaption. So if we move these to maybe halfway between there, like so, and we move everything accordingly, I'll probably move these ones manually so it looks rightish. So something like that, maybe. And we can start getting rid of some of these triangles. I think we already got rid of them on the other side. Yes, we did. So now we're going to have less of a support issue. We still have an issue here, however. So um, I guess what we need to do is add a line here. Actually, let's put the line all the way through there and there and then we'll just match them. So, a lot of fiddling around, getting things to line up. Uh, I would estimate this thing has still another hour to go, so we're probably not, we'll, I'll end the stream in just a sec, we're already at 10 minutes over what we usually do. Yes, I know, I'm gonna keep working, maybe you guys wanna see that at some point. Um, but I don't like talking for that long. That's the problem. Uh, the thing with streaming is you kind of got to keep talking to keep people interested. And uh, I don't want to. <laughs> well, at least they don't need to watch me try to render. No. That would have been horrific. Yes, that would have been uh, slow. <clears throat> A slow day. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of like the original shape better, to be honest, but this now will print without, um, I don't know, I don't hate it, but it will print without support much better. I mean, it, it would have printed anyway, and we've got this issue here to deal with as well. We're going to have to do a similar situation. Solution, sorry. Um, there are a couple of weird things here. Look at this. What is that nonsense? Um, so I'm going to quickly fix that and that, and we're just going to merge these vertexes. And this is kind of like getting to the point where splitting everything in half makes more sense. So another trick too, if you want to align things and you know where the wall is, you can just move things back to where the point is and then only have to orient in one direction. A few less clicks. You can see here there's a uh, some wayward polygons. This would all be the result of uh, mishaps with boolean operations, I'd say. Um, so what we can do is grab these lines, and if we just move this. So it's parallel to that. Yeah. yeah, that is a bit ugly. That is a bit ugly. Hmm. How do we solve this? How do we solve this? All right. Um. Well, we could make some kind of hideous thing like we've done over here. <laughs> uh, we could also, you know what, this thing would look better if we 
just manually move this back so it looks straight, right? That will still print. That looks more interesting, I feel. If you look at it from the top, it looks more deliberate. Maybe slightly more. Something like that. And then we could also just grab this and that. And again, look at it from the top and just try to try to make things make more sense. There we go. Um, so my, my issue here is the directions that all of this is going in. Um, and again, there's lots of unnecessary lines. Like all of these where it's like along the same angle. It's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can zoom in. I'm going to just move all of these over. Because it, it's just unnecessary geometry and it's 100% boolean related. Um, and then there are a couple that we can get rid of entirely. What are you giggling at? Well, they were <clears throat> comparing themselves to you, I guess, in that uh, uh, the viewers had the opposite problem when it uh, comes to talking. Like, uh, for example, Cathy uh, uh, Millet. Millet? How do you say that? I, th that would be up to her to describe, but I would say Millet. Millet. But then... Yeah, for some reason the chat stopped working for me. Oh. I had it refreshed and now there's a bunch more stuff in it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, go on. She said, I have no problem talking for hours. And Dalton said, get me to shut up, it's more my usual problem. Uh, I hadn't noticed that about you, Dalton. The Blossom Samphor said, I'm an introvert and extrovert. I'm super quiet until I get comfortable around you. Then I get loud. <laughs> that describes Swedes to a T. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as long as uh, you have nothing to talk about, no talking will occur. But then uh, all of a sudden, you have a shared interest and, and people will start blabbering. Mm. Uh, I'm just getting rid of some of these excess lines mm. because it will help me try to interpret the shape. And uh, what I'm looking to achieve here. So we've gotten this camfering sort of down pat now. That's why this looks so wrong. I could bring this back. In fact, I'm going to do that. You know what? These original lines, aside from the fact that these are not necessary. And uh, that should be down there. I'm going to bring these back to where they were. Because these will still... As long as this line is straight, which I think it is. Uh, and I will confirm that by looking in the side view. Oh, they're not straight. Okay, well these should be straight. Which means we want the... Uh, the top ones to match the bottom ones for all of these. That also is unpleasant. Kathy Millet said more Millet. So it's probably not Millet. Millet, okay. I, I hate to tell you, um, Kathy, but you share your last name with uh, one of the most notorious serial killers oh. in Australia. <laughs> and and uh, they always pronounce that as Milat, so Millet, okay. That sounds better. <laughs> Ivan Milat was his uh, his name. Um, and he killed a bunch of backpackers. Oh. And I think that film, what is it, um, Something Creek is based on some of his stuff. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, two, two, two. Yes, really. <laughs> yes, really. Um, at least I think it's spelled the same way. 
Now, now I'm not confident. So it sounds like Alvin's googling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ivan Millet, but it's a uh, single L. Oh well, there you go. Really? Yeah. Oh, memory doesn't play well. Close enough. <laughs> but but no. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not spelt the same way apparently, so What is happening here? Is that flanging out or flanging in? Yeah, that's flanging out. So it would make more sense if these all matched over here, I think. Do, do, do. Now I've just, uh, obviously at my health. <laughs> Sorry about that, Kathy. <laughs> <coughs> Anyway, spelling on last names is not that consistent. Anyway, my last name has been spelt many different ways. I'm not even sure we have the right spelling of it compared to what it used to be because when my uh, when my family moved to Australia from Ireland in the 1860s, I have a feeling that they didn't spell their name for the magistrate. The magistrate just tried to figure out what they were saying, but <laughs> since they were Irish. But we do have the English spelling of Mowbray, so. Mm. Then there's the Scottish Mowbray. Mm. And it's kind of spelt like it sounds. And then there's like the Irish version, which is spelt different again. Um, or it was an English Mowbray living in Ireland. We don't know. Mm. <laughs> But he basically moved over about the time of the American Civil War. So I am fifth generation Australian colonist. As far as we know, not a convict. Well, we know for sure because convicts were only for the first 50 years of Australian history. Uh, but, you know, I think maybe our crassness is still based on that. If you ever met an Australian, friendly people, but they can be a, a bit rough around the edges. And that may be from the uh, colonial days where it was a prison colony. I'm just saying. There could, it could be a coincidence. Alright, I think this will be the last solution for today and then we will end things. We wanted this to be flat. We've made it flat. Uh, we need a bit more geometry around the edges. And the goal here is to just have something that's clean because it's not about, like, obviously the 3D printer is going to be fine uh, dealing with that. I just wanted to build in a little bit of built-in support. We'll find out when we actually eventually export it if that is sufficient or not. In fact, why don't we recombine things? Um, so we'll eventually be splitting this down the middle. There's going to be a bunch of issues with the mesh. We definitely will need... Uh, uh, I was going to say mesh mixer, but what I mean to say is uh, netfab. Mm. We'll definitely need to netfab this thing. Uh, I'm just going to manually fill these holes. And um, I think this will actually help demonstrate things. Um, so... Let's go and export this. And oh, we've got the landing shuttle files. We should probably do something with that. Um, let's just put new folder as weapons. And uh, this is some kind of laser cannon. Let's call it the Mark II. <laughs> uh, and that would be heavy laser cannon also. Basically, based on the size uh, we're going for. So, 
In my head canon, your grandfather travels through space and time in order to get his family back into the timeline proper. I don't know what that means. <laughs> It is a solution. Sometimes it helps and sometimes it does not. Okay, I've got the rest of the Firefly here, so that's going to get in the way a bit, probably. Um, so let's just clear the plate because we're tidy. Not really. Fortunately, it exported in the right way. So this is the intended printing direction. Uh, you can see here it says three open edges. Not as many wrongs that I thought there would be in that thing, actually. But let's look what happens if we just slice it and where our issues might lie. So, like I mentioned, there would be these little gaps. So that was planned. Uh, and NetFab has taken care of that. So there's a little wall in between. It probably needs to be slightly thicker. Uh, looking at things or to have like a rib or something on the top just to break it up a little bit uh, but I think that will make for a more interesting shape than having it closed off uh, second uh, we have the base here you can see that all of these blue lines they are uh, overhangs but they go from side to side so they're nothing we need to worry about um, what I might do is add back in a little bit of geometry somewhere in the middle here that's just gonna help okay now that's interesting look here see how this is wider than that side that implies to me that this thing is not straight down the middle so we'll need to look into that these lines here are just perimeters it's uh, automatically chosen where to stick those perimeters um, the walls aren't super thick here I don't always agree with where it decides they should put it in, so I could manually do something. Uh, but let's compare here. So here's our overhangs that we got rid of. You can see now that they have this, I, I sort of like imagine it to be like a snake's head sort of flaring. Uh, and under here, we can directly compare my solution with the original version. And here you can see the blue things indicate poor overhangs, right? To a certain degree at this scale, your slicer will deal with it. Um, so I would not expect any misprints from this. It just might be a little, not bubbly, but unattractive under those edges, right? Obviously, this nice clean line looks better in resin or something if you wanted to support it. Um, but just by adding this little tiny triangle here, um, it's almost a single extrusion, but... Um, or it looks like it actually is a single extrusion. We'll see how that works out. Um, but yeah, the overhangs are sort of dealt with all of a sudden. And here there's nothing that I'd worry about at all. Um, so yeah, we will be changing the underside geometry a little bit. Uh, doing some more work on that. Uh, making it a little bit more fancier and using these sort of panels. So we get this sort of like panel line thing happening. Um... I would be inclined to sort of like paint on, uh, let's see, let's decrease the scale of this. So just like paint on the, uh, oops. Let's see how that slices now. Just getting rid of some of those uh, ugly lines. Okay, that made things worse. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it does. Uh, so let's see, if we right click there, so it doesn't end up on the edges. Let's see how that ends up. See, that's a much cleaner line than it was. Um, and then 
We could also do the insides here technically. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Since this is in a clip hole, if we just made that like so. This is where it's just going to slice the, uh, uh, what's it called it? The seams. Whoops. Let's go back here. So yeah, you can see like the print's just gonna be slightly cleaner than it was. Most of the mess is around this added area that actually doesn't turn up on the uh, on the physical model. Uh, I would have thought that would open up on Netfab, actually, but I guess it did. There's like a tiny little hole there. So, I don't know. There's more work I could do. Technically, I could also address that issue directly in Maya. So that, uh, for example, the edge of uh, the clip hole lines up more correctly. Um, but I'm going to have to investigate where the center point actually is. Uh, you know, this isn't correctly mirrored 100%. Uh, we're still probably looking at a good hour or more of work. So I'm not sure if it'll get done today. Um, but a few small considerations when you're working at small detail. The small details sometimes can make a big difference when it comes to 3D printing. Uh, so if I also change the shader here so that we put it onto like a metal color, all of a sudden the Lancer does look a little bit more interesting than it did uh, with its twin auto cannons. I feel. Uh, something more living up to its name because it looks like it's kind of jousting with this oversized laser on the front, doesn't it? Okay, um, let's wrap things up since we're a half hour over today. Uh, sorry about that, guys, although I guess it's good for my uh, metrics. <laughs> on uh, Assuming I've managed to entertain people long enough, I know I like to have things on in the background when I am modeling. Perhaps you are the same. Perhaps you get a tip here and there if you are modeling in Maya or Blender. There are a couple of synergies between the programs, even if they don't work exactly the same. The principles should be the same. In any case, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, if you would be so kind as to hit the subscribe and like button, uh, that helps us get more notice. The more people that get into Second Dynasty and our products, uh, the more stuff we'll be able to bring you in the long run. Uh, since pretty much everything we get in, actually no, 100% of everything that we get back in really just goes back into the business and making sure that it's running and growing. So once again, thanks for joining me. Lovely to see the same uh, people turning up and some new people as well. Nice to see that not everyone is afraid to ask a couple of questions. And I'm glad at the response for the spider crab. I'm looking forward to modeling it and maybe... That will be next week's session. Although it is the day before Christmas Eve, which is essentially Christmas here because we celebrate it on the 24th. We'll see how things go. Some kind of stream next week should happen. I will see.